Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics. Looking like a car. <laughs> it looks like a car. Just finished up the last two videos of putting on the brand new quarter panels. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a car, but we got to tear it apart from here forward. Okay. We cut the roof off that one, trunk section, deck lid, new quarters. Uh, this video, I'm not sure what we're going to get to uh, on major stuff. The major stuff we need to do next is the doors. And in order to get the doors uh, off, I want to take the fenders off to get the door hinges and replace the hinges with the door uh, the old or the new door <laughs> the new door one there and one here I'm gonna get a couple of used tires and stack them up here lay them up here and uh, paint the jams black went over last video there I just got some black paint and uh, so we may get to it this video so I wasn't planning on doing much to the front end because the fenders I believe they've been swapped before uh, but I'd be, I'd be able to tell better once I get at it uh, whether they've been rusted at the bottom you know if anything they'll be rusted right here at the bottom and patched and bondoed and all that but I uh, tell once I get the door off and all that so I didn't really want to, you know, I took the fenders and the, and everything off of this car. Uh, one side come off good. The other side, these bolts that go on to the uh, wheel well, a bunch of them, just these little clips here, they just break and they spin. And trying to get them off, vice grips and... Oh, it's a pain in the ass. So that's why I really didn't want to go over go over with that one. But when I changed over the power steering hoses underneath there, I mentioned it in the last video, the radiator support's all rusted out. Big holes in it at the bottom. So I think what we'll probably do is take this radiator support off for now, get it over there on an old tire, scrub it down, paint it, get it ready. So if we're going to do that, then yeah, the fenders, the header panel, uh, the headlight buckets, all that stuff has got to come off just to get it unbolt that radiator support. Okay, so we're not going to get to do that on this video, but we'll, we may just get that radiator support off and get it painted. Okay, so in other words, that means this whole front clip has got to come off. Uh, and I've, <laughs> with that being as rusty as it's been, I bet all them bolts are going to break and start spinning. And then we got, I know this area, this area here is rusted out on that car. So, uh, we may have to cut out some little patches and stuff. Or was it this area? No, this area. This area here is rusted out. This is solid. Whatever this bolts to underneath there is solid, but it was all rusted around here. So once we've got the fenders off, we're going to have to check, see what else is rusted under there. It's one of them, you know, it's going to, a one day job is going to turn into a, a four day job because of hidden stuff. But I might as well do it, right? So that, that'll be coming up, not this video though, but I'm just letting you know what's uh, what's coming up. Okay, so we finished off last video. I don't know if I put these on. No, I don't think I did. Anyway, I got all the chrome and weather strip holder, weather strip all in there. Got all that in. It's on the other side too. I just didn't want to mess with this after it's painted, putting it on. Okay, um, I started putting the tail light. It's a little bit tight because new weather stripping. I put the new weather stripping in there. Uh, it's tight, which is good. Keep the water out. 
and building this so it doesn't get one drop of water in there and that's how I tried to do it for 10 years ago but it was so rusted and the water would still penetrate through little spots and okay so I went ahead gonna use this gold orange piece from the other car I already steel wooled all this chrome up I gotta put some little in there that's not really holding it on or nothing it's got a whole bunch of little studs at the bottom holding that in so that's why I didn't want to take it all apart to paint it what we're gonna do so I uh, use this one instead of the original black one because the original black one for uh, I had all this apart and I siliconed it all up so for that black one I'd have to clean all that silicone up and everything and I did. so this one I just put the silicone in where the tail lights the tail lights go in this way then this goes over top of it and you screw them together okay so I put a little silicone no I'll, I'll show you these tail lights are both about the about both the side the same got the little stress cracks on the reverse lights okay so this goes on the inside and I thought, no, that didn't, okay so this is the back piece here so all I did was put a little silicone around all around these where it clamped that's the only holes going into the trunk or for these and then uh, you can see here where I'd put old uh, silicone so I put some silicone around on the new ones different ones and around here so it's sealed up it ain't gonna get one drop of water in it see this old silicone I didn't feel like cleaning all that up just to just to paint this okay so what I'm gonna do is paint all this black we're gonna paint these quarter extensions and lower pieces here and go on the bottom we're gonna go ahead and paint them because I got to take that Chevrolet emblem off anyway so we're gonna lay them out paint them uh, paint this paint the door jams see if I can get that done this episode uh, you see it's so friggin' hot out it's over 100 degrees it's, uh, yeah, it's been the hottest day because it's so hot inside the air conditioner is just not working uh, anyway <coughs> so that's what we're going to try to get done I'm missing this uh, see this goes goes to there I'm missing that black piece or I got it but it was in the trunk but it's completely disintegrated this piece here if anybody knows where to get one I haven't looked on eBay lately but I don't think anybody makes it but yeah I need uh, I need that piece uh, but if I can't find one, I can't find one. I don't think I'd want to make one out of fiberglass. The car's just not that valuable to be messing around for days making little intricate parts and making everything perfect because it's the value's not there. Uh, okay. What else we need to do? Art had all this stuff in the trunk. Went over this last video right at the end. Uh, this is the AC duct. There's a little vent there. It's underneath the dash. It's got obviously some uh, tube type things going. Then this is the plastic uh, glove box liner. All this is in the trunk. Why Art had that out, I don't know, but I'm, I'm assuming because uh, he was hooking up a stereo 25, 30 years ago since it's a cassette deck. <laughs> so we're gonna do that this episode. What I really want to do is, is finish all the little stuff. Okay. Uh, 
first thing we're going to do is uh, I thought about buying a new steering wheel, but I didn't really want to spend 120, 130 bucks. I wiped this off with some reducer. It cleaned up pretty good. Uh, but of course he has this on there because these steering wheels get all sticky. Uh, it ain't too bad, but the very back right here, she's real sticky. I could probably try to clean that up. I probably will for now. But anyway, we need to get this ignition lock out. If she's locked. It, it sat like that with the ignition on for 10 years and uh, it just stuck. And like I mentioned in the other video, there's no little thing and there's no this. Okay guys, there's two Phillips screws and they come off. You can see this nasty stuff here. Anyway, we get uh, my impact. Uh, the horn, I hooked the battery up. It does not work, but uh, it was hooked up. It's hooked up to there. So it, it could just be a bad connection or fuse or something. Anyway, let me get my impact and socket, pull that off, and then I'll, I'll get my puller over here and we'll hook it up to these two right here and pull it out. Okay, I'll be back. There it is. Okay, let me get the puller. Okay, guys. Did that, two bolts, and uh, came off. So now it's got one screw's missing, so somebody's been in here before. Lost a screw. Everything's sticky. All, look at all the sticky crap all dripping. Okay. Now, this is the... There's, there's a tool for this. But I don't have it. Because <laughs> I like to struggle, I guess. <laughs> Let me pop this out. Got your horn. Usually these are broke right here. It's probably why they were in there fixing that. And it still doesn't work. But Okay, so... This little uh, clip is right there. I don't know if you can see my screwdriver right there what you got to do is push this in and you gotta <laughs> use a, a something something bigger than this push that in and I got these two little pick deals uh, you can usually get it out with one with one pick uh, so you push this in and then use that little pick and pick that up and then the spring will come out. Once the spring is out, then this whole thing comes out that we can get at the uh, ignition. But uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I used one hand and pushed that in. And then I used this little pick here to pick that end, end, end out of that spring. See, so you can see it's out. Okay, and just kind of remember how it goes back in, I believe. It's just a little bit, a little bit more difficult, probably taking that or putting that back in. But anyway, put that on the ground. Put that on the ground. And that, okay. Uh, okay, we may have to take out the turn signal deal. <coughs> okay. Just take off that screw there, get this handle out of the way. Unscrew this four-way. All right, it's got a Phillips there, too. Okay. Then these three Phillips. One, two, three. Then that whole thing will move out of the way. Let me just do it here real quick. Okay, 
get that handle out of the way oh that's a that's a little wire for cruise control so make sure you don't break that we'll get this four way out of the way it does work I put in new tail lights and uh, made sure they work okay so we'll get these two out here one two and then this one you just move this move that like you're turning the right signal on Okay, and this should just slide out. That little <laughs> cruise control thing is going to be a little bit, bit, a bit of a pain in the ass, but I don't think we'll have to get it too far. Uh, I believe that's the let me see if I can find that little. I'd like to pull this all the way out, but that cruise control wire is just kind of. I believe these three big fillet tears for the uh, tilt column. Uh, I think it's right there. I have to use two hands. There's a. Let me take this. Let me just take this this apart here. Yeah, all you do. Uh, it had enough play in here. To uh, move that cruise control actually went down to here uh, so yeah you can pull this out over here all I did was stick there li a little flathead screwdriver right there just pushed in there and it just popped out okay so we'll put the uh... not exactly We may have to push this back to uh, lock. And just line that up, line that up to that. So all you do, let me just, uh, I don't know if this big screwdriver will fit. Oh no, it's, it's the opposite. You gotta stick some needle nose in there and turn it back I believe because it would be right yeah okay let me get some needle nose and turn that to uh, lock and then this should just slide right in there okay I'll be back okay I just stuck those needle nose in there and grab that deal right there and turned it back to lock so well it should snap in there but hang on maybe it's not it's not all the way Unless I went one too far and went to accessory, I may have. So let me just 
try that. There it is. There it is. Turn it back, pull the key out now. So yeah, what happens, there's something in here, something in here that, that locks after it sits for a while in, in the open on position. I don't know what it is, but anyway, it's fixed. And if I didn't mention, I think this is 1379, 13 bucks, so. There it is, she's all fixed. Just gotta put it put it back together. Like I said, that little O ring. Yeah. Uh, put that back. Uh, that little O ring is gonna be a little difficult. You gotta push that. Basically put that ring on and keep keep pushing it with the uh, with the little screwdriver. Just keep pushing it around and putting pressure on that plate and it'll eventually seat in there and stay in there okay i'll be back okay guys next morning i finished this up last night but uh it was too dark i had a hell of a time getting that clip on there but anyway oh. well it did lock now there it's locked okay so yeah i was pushing that steel deal on there and i was pushing with a screwdriver and then using my other hand to push that ring down in there and that screwdriver slipped and hit that little plastic round thing which is for the horn uh so if the horn don't work after checking fuses and all that it's probably that little plastic deal but anyway, I may buy a Grant steering wheel later on. Okay, so I think the next step is to check these wires here. I hook up the battery, uh, see which ones are going to the radio, see if we can get some power to the radio. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with the ignition deal there. So. Uh, Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, before we get started today, I wanted to show you a product I was sent from a sponsor. It's a High Boy Max Pro electric scooter. Now, <laughs> uh, you know, I only do products that I or you could use. Like the last one I did was the... Uh, shop lights and i've done you know tools little welder thing uh stuff like that i get all kinds of offers for other bs stuff and i just turn them down that's they're no use to me or anybody else really so probably thinking well what would you need a scooter for well i've been thinking about getting something uh electric bicycle scooter three-wheeler something uh, for a while now uh, this one guy I know classic ride society he goes to all these swap meets and and he had a video a while back on Pate swap meet now I've been to Pate swap meet way 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 back in the day uh, it, it's you know now it's at the is it texas motorplex there in fort worth i haven't been for a while but he was mentioning i think it was him must have been him that if you walked uh every aisle it was 35 miles 35 or 70 i can't remember which but even if it was 35 uh, I don't know how many people can walk 35 miles. 
especially you know how long would that actually take and what could you see uh, I don't go to that many swap meets but I'd like to and it's, it's not just swap meets like events uh, stuff like that and a little electric scooter especially those uh, the other thing I was thinking when I was you know I built the nomad to uh, go on some drag and drive events and that's the thing too you when you're drag racing you park in one area and you got to get walk uh, do a lot of walking back and forth uh, so if you ever notice on those videos everybody's got a little electric scooter or something because they're always going back and forth a couple of miles at a time uh, so that's why I was thinking of getting something like this and it weighs apparently it weighs 60 pounds uh, so could easily fit that on a roof rack you know or even in the back so uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, reasons why and also my property here I'm constantly walking back and forth 10 20 times a day to either get a part uh, ch you know check the mail uh, all kinds of stuff my sheds going to my sheds there to get stuff so it's a lot of walking and I think this little scooter I can just zip around if I need like right now I need uh, three old tires over there to set these doors on so I can paint the jams well I could take that scooter go up here to where my junk tires are and pick one up at a time and bring it over here if I can drive this thing with one hand I would think you could uh, so yeah it's gonna come in very useful around the property just to you know I, I, I need a spare tire and jack for this and the spare tire is three I took off the Nova up here so I can just drive over there grab a tire put it underneath my arm drive it back over here without you know especially in the heat it's all 100 degrees every day uh, so anyway there's just a few reasons uh, come in handy I'll put the link and description and promo code if there's one and all that stuff in the description below the video but uh, I haven't opened it yet it, it came a few days ago let me get a razor blade Now, they initially said that they were coming out with this new model. See, they asked me about this about a month ago. And they said, we're coming out with a new model the mid middle of June. It's more an off-road thing. You know, I don't know whether it was higher with uh, bigger tires or knobby tires or all-terrain type, that stuff. And I said, yeah, that'd be perfect. Actually, they recommended it. They actually watch my videos said I think this this scooter here that we're coming out with in middle of June would be uh, better for you and I said yeah no problem so middle of June came and they said oh we got a big delay on our new model uh, can we send you the uh, initial one so what the difference is between the two models I'm not sure but it's a scooter it just may be I don't know it may be lower or something but it, it'll work it'll work around here so yeah it, it just come in real handy uh, don't know how much assembly is required hopefully not much so anyway let me pull this out of here and uh, We'll set it up and I'll show you show you what it needs to uh, be assembled. Okay guys, got a kickstand right here. Okay, uh, this was hanging down, so they say just to 
press that in the, into there like that okay and then this was bent down here this is just a to fold it so you open well I just clicked it into place open up okay pull that down so this will the slide so if you're transporting it in your car or truck and go like that see and then you lift it up push this and it clicks into into shape okay so said so there's six allen keys they give you a little baggie with the extra tubes tires are good I guess those are just in case you get a flat and then they give you this bag of goodies here these look like something on the valve stem to tell you there's leaking. And then the six, uh, six screws. Let me put, yeah, it's just right here. Just click the main arm up, attach the handle controls. Well, that's, that one is just for, uh, connect the power cord. And, uh, slide the handlebar down and then use the allen keys and this is a split a split wheel hub they said so I guess that's how you take the tire the tire off the rim if you need to and then this is just all the uh, power stuff then they give you a full a full manual which I probably won't read at all but uh, Okay, and then this is the, I don't know what that is. I guess the charger. We'll figure out where the battery and stuff is. Let me put in these Allen, Allen screws here and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, put the charger on there. Just plugs in, plugs in right there. And uh, when the green light comes on, it's charged. It seemed to be about half charged okay this little sticker was on here power line just push it once well maybe it's not come not coming on because of the charger me uh unplug the charger okay so you got yeah see i think it's only half charged so this mode, that's why I put the little thing here. Short press for the light to come on. It's got a little headlight right there. And a little tail light there. Just so I can take that plastic off. Okay, uh, mode, twice. So you click twice. That's S is sport mode. That's eco mode. Just drive and sport. There's only three. There's only three uh, drive modes. And it's mainly for speed. Depending on how fast you want to go. Charging. I don't know what it says here. Okay. S indicates sport mode. 22 miles an hour. D, drive, 16 miles an hour. Eco, 11 miles an hour. So the top speed is 22 in sport mode. When the icon light is always on, you've activated cruise control. Press three times to enable. Okay, I put the air pressure monitor thing on here. So this is green means good. It'll turn red if... Uh, it's leaking. Okay, so it's got two two brakes, and this is the accelerator. See, I tried to tried to hit the gas, and nothing happens. Well, it, it says you got to roll it. You get you got to put one foot on it and start rolling it. Then it'll go. So 
I'm gonna mess this. That, but at first I thought it was because it was only half charged. So let me just test it here with both hands. Then I'll take you for a ride uh, with the camera. Now I just take this little thing here so I can rem remember that. And then you press uh, a long pause for three seconds to turn the whole thing off. So you don't waste the battery. Okay, yeah, let me charge it up a little bit more and test it out. And I'll be back. Hi hey guys. I just drove it around the property. It's pretty easy. Well, it's got side lights too. Okay, yeah, this is the accelerator here. Just hang on and I'll try it with one hand of steering it and giving it gas. Uh, you don't really need the brake unless you got to make a sudden stop. But, uh, but yeah, you just got to, uh, let me just hold on to the camera here or a handlebar. So you just got to get started and then boom, it goes. I'll get used to driving one hand. It's just hit it's just hitting the throttle. See here's my junk tires here. So saying stop here without even using the brake. So what I'll do is I'll grab one tire with one hand and drive this with the other and bring three tires over there instead of lugging them around. So uh yeah. Hang on, camera. <laughs> the camera tripod thing fell down. Now yeah, shaking the camera too much. Much easier driving it with two hands than I'm doing it with one right now. See all these rocks here makes it a little rough, but it seems to be okay. Yeah, in sport mode, I tr this is just eco mode here. Sport mode is pretty fast compared to this. So there it is, guys. I said it folds up pretty good. Folds up so you can stick it in a trunk or bed of a car. Take it with you when you go to swap meets. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how long the charge lasts, but it says to charge it once a month whether it needs it or not. So it may last a month. But, you know, if you're going to go 70 mile uh, paid swap meet routes, you can... Uh, buy a battery pack uh, uh, like one of them booster packs that's another thing I've sold on here before and stick that in, uh, plug that in and uh, charge it up with a booster pack but anyway here's all the this just says the same things and then it just has a bunch of safety things you know don't drive it in the rain don't just don't have another person on it and there's the folding and carrying you can carry it oh that's what that's for okay I was wondering what this was for here see that little hook right there where I showed you where you bend it hook that hook right in there and carry it like a suitcase <laughs> so yeah well maybe I should do that just to show you let me turn this off here what was it off three hold it for three seconds three seconds okay and then push this up I got that little deal in the way Just 
clicks in there. There you go. And carry it around like that. We get over here in the shade. Yeah, pretty pretty neat little deal. So yeah, if you ever need to zip around on a property or like I said, seems like a cool little uh, device to have. Uh, let me just push this down. I think we just. That's it. <clears throat> well, okay, guys. I think I'm going to like it. It'll come in handy, like I said, for a bunch of different applications. Okay, guys. We'll get back to the uh, Malibu here in just a minute. Okay, guys. I'm going to show you, show you me riding it. Easy. Okay, guys, I got a stereo in there. Okay, so, uh, the cassette deck that was in it it was actually hooked up i mean it had power going to it you could just barely read the digital numbers but uh, it wasn't uh going out the speakers uh one side kind of crackled a little bit if you turned it anyway uh so i screwed around checking running a new speaker wire testing that and the speaker wires were fine uh but yeah there's something wrong with the stereo and then i had a cassette here and i put a cassette in it and uh <clears throat> i pressed fast forward to reverse and it spun for a second and i stopped it and i ejected it and sure enough it had ate the tape uh but i got it all pulled out and used a screwdriver to wind it back in so yeah I, the thing was just a piece of garbage um so anyway, somebody had sent me this one. Uh, it's just an AM, FM, and you, I don't know, you hook your Bluetooth or something to it. I never do that. Or a U UBS port, if you got stored music and all that. But anyway, got that working. Got the wires kind of up there. Uh, so I just got to figure out all this uh, AC duct work and all that there should be a big plate going down there too i'll see if i can round all that up and hook all that up yeah there should be a plate down there where that interior light mounts to and uh yeah there's another another interior light there too interior light there 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 then this is supposed to be a reading interior light i don't know Uh, bulb might be bad. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, let me uh, let me get started with that, and I'll be back. Okay, guys. Had to put that bottom piece on because you had to attach the duct into this. Uh, yeah. Put this. This is actually from the parts car, this black piece. His, his was cracked, duct taped up. So, yeah. Yeah, this was his here. Piece of duct tape on there. Uh, so yeah, this is the driver's side here. Hooks up to that duct. Goes across. So got all that hooked up. Uh, gotta figure out where that 
interior light goes. I don't think there's one on the parts car. I can't find it. It's got a few other little little extras that that one doesn't have. Another one I found was the trunk button, but he's actually got another one here. Trunk release. I need to take the wires out of the uh, uh, old deck lid. And then, I don't know, I don't, I think that's probably the best rear view mirror I got. It's not very good. And these were all the clips for the moldings that were originally on it. There's a quarter molding. These were in the ashtray. Those are to put these on, probably from the doors. Anyway, I put all them in a box. And, uh, yeah, I'm just about wrapped up in here, but the sun just came out. It was a little cloudy, not too bad, but now the sun's out, and it's just like being in a oven. So I'll be back later. Okay, guys. Going back out here a few hours before it gets dark. Okay, I put the back seat back in, uh, since we know the speaker wires work. So that's in there. Yeah, this... Used to be more red, just like the inserts on the panels there. But I'm not spending, you know, 100 bucks worth of paint, paint it all red. You know, that and the, these front inserts. So for now, it's just staying like that. Uh, like I said, got one can. We'll do the door panels and whatever's left over. We'll try to paint them red and over there. Okay, uh, got that little light mounted up there. That's another little extra this car has, is that, uh, so I think it's pretty much loaded, all the options. Little trash, little trash can with a lid. <laughs> so, Anyway, I'll get that on there. Uh, the other rear view mirror looks like that. So, I don't know. I don't know if I got an extra one from the El Camino or not. And I put it right here. See, looks the same pretty much. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done. Waiting on the dome light. Tracking says it's supposed to be here tomorrow. But uh, I think there's a big problem with USPS. Because I've had a few items now going on two, three weeks. That tracking shows they never left. I just file for, for a refund. Or where I just file and say, hey, where's my item? They just refunded my money. So there are a couple items like that. That can of uh, weld through primer, which we didn't get to you. I thought it'd be here in a few days. Well, it's been like 10 days. Still hadn't shown up. Uh, tracking said it's supposed to be here tomorrow, but a little too late to use it on the next project. A uh, few things like that. Uh, it's just hit and miss. I mean, that paint I showed last video came in two days. I couldn't believe it. It was like paint. Uh, so yeah, no big deal, I'm in no rush. Okay, so right now, got all this sanded here, I'm going to mask up these lights and paint this black, and paint up all these deals here, and paint them all black as well. There's some other stuff I wanted to, but I can't think of them right now. Oh, the door. I want to do the passenger door first. So let me get... That is the driver's. That's the passenger. I'm going to get that passenger over here on a uh, tire and sand the jam on that. Core support, I'm not quite sure on right yet. I don't have enough time to pull that off before it gets dark uh she's it's gonna fight me rusty bolts just like working on a northern car 
um, so I'll probably do that tomorrow or the next day or the next video I don't know but yeah let's get the jam ready get these parts ready tomorrow I can put all them on there have all this back end done uh, pretty much got the interior done other than the, the dome light and the rear view mirror and then I'll pull it around and we'll start on the passenger door and fender and stuff and that'll be for next video so anyway I'll be back later okay used the scooter went over picked up two tires and uh, now the problem with this door these uh, bushings and pins are are shot they're pretty bad uh, so see originally I was going to just take the fender off and bolt it in with that but we'll have to see how the hinges are on on this one uh, I believe O'Reilly's and AutoZone sell them pins and bushings I usually order them off eBay but uh if they got the ones I need we may just rebuild the ones that are on it uh, this mirror here is busted but these two mirrors are good they just will need to be painted up uh, the door weather stripping yeah I'll probably have to order new ones this is the belt molding these are the new ones I got right there uh, but yeah she's uh she's rust free and wait till we get to the episode where we're changing the doors it's like I mentioned a few times already those doors are thick with Bondo and rust <laughs> and this there's no rust there might be a little bit of rust on the inside I think under underneath that molding anyway uh I guess I'm going to have to order this door weather stripping. I'm going to leave these two little deals on there. Little bumpers, bump stops, things. Uh, yeah, it's not, not in very good shape. But anyway, what we're going to do is... Might take them hinges off. For now and uh, anyway we're gonna sand all this and paint all this black you know I can paint this while it's on the door but not not inside here it, you just can't get at it and might as well do it since the doors off then I'll take the uh, belt molding off the other thing I need to think about is these these big rivets here for the power windows we got to convert this to power windows and power locks and uh, I haven't used it in so long, but I got a big rivet gun for these rivets, but I, I'm pretty sure I don't have no rivets. Maybe my local paint store has them. Uh, but yeah, we got to drill all them out, grind all them out, put in all the power window stuff. I'll probably do that when it's on the car. That's why it's going to take a while, guys, to change all that crap over. But anyway, let me get rolling on this and sand these stuff. It's going to take take a while, so it'll probably be tomorrow before I come back. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys. Well, through primer just came in. Took 10 days. Too late. Okay, this is the uh, dome light. You can buy just the cap. You can buy the housing. Or you can buy the deal and it has a pigtail and you just splice in the two wires. All different prices, obviously. You know, this is like, I don't know, seven bucks, but if you want the whole thing, it's like 18. And then if you want the one with the pigtail, it's like 30. So, uh, my housing, of course, this disintegrated, but the housing, the little plastic deals that the steel 
clips go into is busted. So that's why I needed them too. So I think I just stick them in there and then stick the bulb in there and uh, turn the safety interior. Maybe the battery went dead. Uh, anyway, let me put that in there. Goes in with these two little clips here. I got three, but there's two. There's two little studs there that the clips go on. So anyway, let me put that in there. I'll be back. Okay, guys, there it is. Okay, another little thing done. Okay, I started uh, stripping this car down. Got the weather strip, the belt molding. Uh, we'll have to put a little rust treatment right in that edge there. I started chipping away the uh, old caulking. But anyway, she sanded down. Uh, I was doing it in the dark last night, but I'll go over it again. Same with these spots here. These uh, parts. These are... They're pretty rough, but I'm not going to be sanding overboard and try to make it perfectly smooth. So if they look kind of shitty, I think it's in behind the bump, bumper anyway, but anyway. Okay, I'll get some primer and paint on these when I, I'm going to go over it one more time here in the light. <laughs> Make sure I got it all sanded. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys. Next day. I started doing a little painting last night. Painted this taillight area. Uh... But it got too dark to be painting other stuff here. So I got uh, little fillers up here. I'm going to paint them. Just going to paint the back of these extensions. And then uh, bolt them on there and paint them when I paint the car. But right now we got to paint this jam. It was just too dark to get at this other area there. This is the last of that old black paint. Using it up. Sprayed some rust neutralizer that, that area and put a little seam sealer. That's where the factory stuff was. Okay, so let me uh, let me do that, and I'll be back. Okay, here's the old uh, dome light. See where the uh, wire is supposed to go in there? The clips, it's all busted, and so that's why I needed that. Okay, got uh, got these fillers painted. Like I said, it's going to look shitty. I'm not going to put no Bondo or nothing in there. Uh, that's the best it's going to get. Okay. I had to paint a license plate, frame, marker, lenses, quarter extensions, and uh, this door jam here. Okay, so... Starting to get hot out right now, so I'm gonna probably quit, come back later tonight, and uh, start on this door. And I think we'll just start a new video on that door. It's gonna be quite a job converting it from manual to power, so stay tuned next episode for that. But what I'll do is uh, I'm gonna put all this together. Well, not the marker lens things, but the uh, quarter extensions and the fillers here. I'm going to put all that together and uh, show you that. And if anything else comes up, uh, I did order the door weather stripping 
$111 shipped. Yeah, they're, they just screw you on parts for these uh, 73 to 77s. Uh, I don't know why, but the days of $40 weather stripping uh, is gone, I guess, because that's what I usually pay, 40, 45 bucks for a set of doors or a set of roof rails for a hell for a hundred bucks you get everything. It used to be a hundred bucks, door, roof, rail, and a uh, trunk. But now it's, uh, you're looking at 250 bucks or something for all that now. So, yeah, that, what else did I want to go over? A uh, lot of questions and comments. Uh, a bunch of comments. Get the Laguna front end. Listen, guys, it's not the 80s anymore. You can't go to the junkyard and get a Laguna front end cheap. There's none left. There's none of these left. You go to any junkyard, there's, you know, maybe one out of a thousand might have something in there, but certainly not around here. You'd have to really, really hunt for one. And if somebody's making a new Laguna front end, it would be an absolute fortune. It's not just the front nose, it's the, the, the inner rebar bumper structure that the rubber goes over, it's the headlight bezels, it's the grill. I can only imagine how many thousands of dollars that would cost if somebody made it new. I haven't even looked because I have no interest in spending thousands of dollars on something like that. Uh, so yeah, it's it, it, you can't go to a junkyard and get one, guys. You know, it'd be a, a needle in a haystack trying to find one. Uh, yeah, anyway, there's other comments about... I'm going to check into dye, so you can get the red, red dye for two bucks. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I put in Firethorn Red on eBay, not, uh, just those spray cans come up. The semen number, just the cans come up. Uh, if I can get some red dye for all that interior uh, inserts and all that, uh, for, for a couple of bucks, yeah, for sure I'll do it. But far as I know you can't I don't know I'll check into it uh, I think that's about it oh well like I said I'll come back I'll show you the taillight stuff and uh, if I got any more comments there I'll uh, I'll let you know on stuff like that but yeah next video like I said will be We'll start on that passenger door and turn this car around. Start on it tonight, and I'm going to get the floodlights out here. Oh, that was the other comment. Oh, put a carport in front of the garage. <laughs> if I wanted to work in the shade, I can work on the... That's what that carport was for, that big one there. Of course, I got two of my cars in there. But if I wanted shade and wanted to keep working, then I could work underneath that carport. A, a carport in front of this garage is just going to be right in the way and <laughs> most of the time in the spring fall winter I work outside if y'all been following me long I work year-round it's pretty good weather you know maybe a couple of weeks in the winter time it'll get cold or a couple of days during one week but most of that time I want to feel the Sun carports gonna be blocking the Sun like right now uh, I want to feel the sun. That's that's heat. When it's spring or or winter time, especially winter time, you know, yeah, it'll get up to 70 during the day. But you come out here in the mornings, and it's 40 degrees out. You need you need that initial sun coming over here, and at night before it gets dark to uh, warm warm up. You know, it'd be so. Anyway, a, a carport would be right in the way of this. It, it's and it, you know you have the legs sticking out way over here it's it's just gonna be a pain in the ass so it's a bad bad idea I got like I said I got carports I can, I can work on one there drag extension cords air hoses or that one but like you know in the hot a couple of months in the hot summer I just come out here in the early morning as soon as the Sun comes up I got three or four hours and then at night Start, sun starts to go down and I can get lights out here and, and do it so I can get in you know 
six, seven, eight hours a day anyway. You know, do I want to work 20 hours a day and work the rest of the day uh, underneath the carport? Not, no, not really. I don't have to. I got to go in there and edit videos and buy parts and stuff. So that's what I do like right now in the middle of the day. I need to go in there. I forgot what else I needed to. Uh, got a few other parts I'm going to buy for uh, this and I'll look up the die. So I, I'll, I'll do all that stuff during the... Uh, during the time that uh, it's too hot or whatever. So yeah, anyway, just thought I'd go over that. Uh, yeah, we'll eventually get this driver's door out here and paint paint the jam on that. Uh, but like I said, I wanna do the passenger first. It's gonna be kind of a pain in the ass to uh, switch it over to power. I'm gonna knock this little deal out here for where the wiring harness goes in so I want to do the passenger side first in case it's a problem because the main switches and everything are on the driver's side so once I get that together then I can use the switches and make sure everything works on that passenger and then go to the drivers and finish it up okay so that'll be next episode we'll we'll do that we'll uh clean up them door panels and uh, paint them I got one can left uh, we'll paint them see how they turn out finish at least the passenger door depends on how fast it goes we got to fix the door pins I went in and took the hinges off I'll just go ahead and fix the hinges that are on it but yeah these are uh, I think I showed you we need pins and bushings I got some but I think you can see the slop in here. See? And I think you need those oversized ones. Uh, I'll have to see what I got and what AutoZone O'Reilly's has. If not, I might have to stop on it and order the whole kit from eBay with the oversized washers and all that stuff. Or uh, bushings. See, one's, this one here is already pushed out. See, it's all busted. That's that's it there. See, slides in. So it, it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass doing all this little stuff to these doors. You can't just, you know, boom, boom, boom. Uh, so, yeah, we're just struggle on this passenger one. Okay, I just thought I'd tell you that. But anyway, I'll come back uh, later tonight and uh, we'll go over this back end and uh, bid you all a farewell to the next video. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, just cleaning up the slab. There's no uh, transmission fluid drips here, so <coughs> uh, it was just low for sitting for 10 years. So a um, couple other things I wanted to go over. You see the grill on this? Be better both side by side completely different than that and somebody in England wanted the grill but see it's busted here there's little things busted and the shipping would be astronomical to England anyway but you know when I mentioned this is a Landau a couple comments oh that just means convertible top well yeah it probably yeah that partly that but why are the grills different Landau got a different grill. I don't know. These are both 77s. Unless this is a different year model. It's been swapped over or vice versa. Okay. So, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I'm fixing to pull it in here. Uh, oh, was there something else? I just, I was just thinking of something while I was sweeping this up. Okay, I'll be back. Oh, okay, there's a couple of comments. Oh, just uh, get this running and drive it around as a convertible and all this stuff. Guys, I'm not a big YouTuber. I don't make stupid money on YouTube to overpay for junk, spend a week fixing up junk just to get a video of driving around looking stupid. And then when it breaks down, just abandon it on the side of the road. 
and then collect your 10 grand off of YouTube for your video. Uh, a, a, a lot of big YouTubers do that. You know, Vice Grip Garage, Pole Barn Garage, they do it all the time. Uh, to me, it's not worth it. And, and if you're saying, oh, Vice Grip Garage, yeah, Vice Grip Garage does. Do you remember him buying a wooden Lamborghini? Some guy spent five years making a wooden Lamborghini. Well, I don't, he didn't make it very far. Vice Grip Garage bought it, got it running, and drove it and well he abandoned it down the road it just it just blew up I think it caught on fire or something not a big fire but it was it was done motor was shot pole barn garage just did it you know in that wagon he spent a week fixing up some old Ford wagon and you know to me complete waste of time defies common sense uh, they just get paid the big bucks on for uh, YouTube money uh, they'll get ten, uh, average 10 grand a video easy they get a million views they got 10 grand okay so yeah it's worth it to them and it's entertainment for you guys doesn't mean somebody like me makes you know 50 50 bucks a video to be doing that <laughs> and i wouldn't do it anyway even if i got paid 10 grand a video i wouldn't be you know driving this around just to hey, look at this or keep it as a convertible <laughs> Uh, so anyway guys this uh, I get comments like that all the time fix this up fix that up make this make that if it defies common sense and it, it, it doesn't make uh, financial sense no I'm not gonna do it so that's not what this channel's about okay so uh, anyway let me get this over here and uh, I'll come back later and we'll uh, put the tail lights and stuff in there okay I'll be back okay guys put in these two pieces here I'm gonna paint them when I paint the car I just wanted some color in there behind it some paint and I wanted to put this on there I'll just mask that up when I paint it uh, so yeah anyway that's it other than that rear filler piece I meant to look on eBay and see if there was any on there, but I remember I looked a long time ago and nobody makes it, but who knows? Some guy, some guy might make them and uh, doing a get rich quick scheme there and uh, see what people will pay for one. <laughs> but anyway, until I come across one, like I said, I could make one out of fiberglass or something, but uh, I don't think it's worth it. Okay. We'll end the video on that. I just ordered a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, some of that red zot or zit or something dye. Yeah, it wasn't two bucks. Uh, it was ten bucks for a 7.5 ounce or something. And we'll try it. We'll see how much it, it covers. It's for fabric, fabric dye. So we'll see. Uh, tons of other stuff for the door coming up. Uh, so anyway I think that'll be it guys it's starting to look like a car now but now we got to go from the doors up doors in the front end to do still still a long ways to go before she's ready to paint and put on the road and all that stuff so okay well thanks everybody for watching uh, I wasn't trashing vice grip garage or pole barn garage that you know I'm just I'm just pointing out the differences between what I do and what they do they're doing it for more for entertainment uh, they're not doing it for practical common sense purposes they're just doing it for entertainment comedian type stuff uh, I don't do that here I actually build cars that you can make money on and and uh, and all that stuff I don't teach you how to butcher stuff how to spray can cars and 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 use a million self tappers to put a car together you know so I'm just telling you the differences. Uh, you want entertainment, you want somebody to build a convertible out of that and drive it around and look stupid. Yeah, go to Pole Barn Garage or, or one of them guys and maybe even Puddin might do it, I don't know. Uh, so anyway, I'm not trashing on them. I watch their videos, I like most of them. Uh, sometimes he, <laughs> Dalton does a good job on a, on a car, other times it's just complete hackery. 
and it's you know just a, a, a death trap on the highway you know so it, and I, I would never do that but like I said you know you, that's how you get the big YouTube money build a, a death trap driving on the road and <laughs> that's where the big money's at I'm not in it for that so don't think I'm trashing them or you know anybody else DD speed shop more power to them selling his cars for what he what he's got into him he ain't making no profit off of them uh, he said all his profit is on from, from YouTube you know so uh, we don't do that either we, we wouldn't sell this car for what I had in it it would have to be a, a big amount to make money for labor and stuff we don't we don't count on YouTube to pay our, our labor bills because uh, if that was the case I wouldn't even fix it I wouldn't even fix these cars up there's no use fixing them up for free labor. Uh, but, you know, like I said, Dan is a, a YouTube guy, a 100% true blue YouTube guy, and that's what they do. They, they can't make money on their cars. They just got to sell them for what they put into them or try to get some of the money they put in for parts and all that. And Okay, so anyway, enough rambling. Did a lot of rambling. Sorry for the long video. Sorry we didn't get a lot more done. But we, we just got to keep rolling along here in the 100 degree heat every day. And we'll st only start the next video here in a little bit. And we'll, uh, we'll start on this door. So anyway, guys, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And we'll see you all next video. Thanks everybody for watching.